Matt Jesus on a pilgrimage, still walking. I'm Andy Doyle, the Bishop of Texas, and that's my six-word autobiography. My hope for this podcast is to walk with you and talk with you about God, the church, and where we're headed next. As our uh, bulletin reminds us this morning, this is Good Shepherd Sunday, right? And so we have that beautiful uh, Psalm 23, which we read together, and then the lesson speaking to us about the the Good Shepherd, uh, the gate for the sheep. What seems important to me about uh, this particular gospel lesson as I meditated over it this year uh, and thought about it anew over the last couple of days, what I began to realize is that um, Jesus is speaking in chapter 10 to his followers uh, and those around him who are very concerned Uh, about what is going to happen in their lives. They're very concerned about their future. They're concerned about what's happening as they continue to follow Jesus. And so what's so very present uh, for me in this context as this lesson pops out is that they are afraid. They are experiencing a lot of fear. And fear is one of the most common human feelings. Uh, All of us uh, know what it's like to be afraid. And in fact, not only is it most common uh, human feeling, but it is also one of the most used words in all of Scripture. So beginning from the first book to the last book, fear is repeated over and over uh, again. I think that if we examine our time, Uh, And our moment uh, in this world, we could honestly say, if we sat over a cup of coffee and just shared what we were thinking about, we would find that there actually is a lot of fear in our community today that we are sharing. And we're, we're afraid for a lot of different things. We're afraid for our families, for our children. Some people are afraid for uh, financial security. Uh, some people are afraid that as prices for groceries and electricity go up, that they won't have money to meet the mortgage. Uh, certainly there is a lot of fear in this country about schools, having good schools for our kids to go to, but also safe schools for children to go to. Uh, We're afraid for our health. Uh, This is a a major place in our culture where we spend a lot of money because we're afraid about our health and we may be afraid uh, for our parents' health. Um, I also would say that uh, almost all of our lives are touched Uh, by addiction of some kind or another. And so we fear for our beloved ones, our friends, our neighbors, who we know get trapped in that uh, cycle uh, of addiction for one kind or another. And then lastly, I would just say that uh, we are uh, afraid uh, because a lot of decisions are made without our input. (laughs) Like at the end of the day, there are a lot of people who have a lot of say over how all of those things will be determined that we don't get to participate in. And so I think that just adds right to this sense. Now, most days uh, we uh, bump along pretty good, but this is all in the background. And the thing about fear is that it's motivational. So fear itself Uh, is part of what motivates us to do certain things, to be uh, in certain ways uh, in relationship with each other and with our families and friends. Uh, Fear can lead us to be overly protective when we don't need to be. It doesn't have to always have a negative consequence, right? But it can be that sense of desiring to take care that we get concerned. And that resonates with this passage because that's when uh, I think uh, we have two responses. That as Christians, we can respond to fear in two different ways. And one of those ways is to be gatekeepers. One of the ways is to be gatekeepers because gatekeepers seek to control 
in order to lessen their fear. And gatekeepers uh, have a couple of qualities. They are not truly interested in getting to know folks at a deep level because that means that your friends could ask you for something, which would mean you'd have to share something, right? So, so this is the way you, you block people out. You actually close the gate on new and different relationships because you're worried about what people may require of you. Gatekeepers uh, uh, want to keep what they have from others. And so if they find uh, good things, <laughs> they like to keep it close and to not share uh, so that they have plenty of the goodness. Uh, and if you find it, fine, but that's going to be on your own. The good gatekeepers are not going to kind of lessen the stumbling blocks and show you how to navigate the world. They're going to, you know, good for you if you can do that. But uh, I know how to do it. I'm not necessarily going to share that with you. And gatekeepers also will disguise themselves as uh, uh, shepherds, which means they're all buddy-buddy, right? Like, we'll be friends, but any sign of trouble that might stick to me, never seen this guy, right? <laughs> like, like, right, that if, if you've got, you could like, I'll be friends up to a point, right? And then if you get in trouble, uh, you stand over there, I'll stand over here. Because we're afraid of how all of that might look and how all of that might affect us. Um, and I would lastly say uh, that uh, gatekeepers uh, really do uh, want to make sure that, uh, that people like themselves get in. It's kind of the worst of all gatekeeper characteristics, to be honest, right? Which is, yeah, if you're like me, agree with me, think like me, you can come in. If you don't, I'm going to create a gate, a barrier there between us. Now, that's the first way. The second way, I would suggest, is the gospel way, is the Christian way to respond to fear. Uh, and that is to remember that Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. That Jesus says, I am the gate. And I open for you, to you, the kingdom of God. I share it with you. I mean, breaking down immediately the difference, right? To say that the good shepherd opens God's self to all people. Through me you have life. Uh, uh, it, God desires a relationship uh, God understands what may be required of that relationship and gives Jesus, his, Jesus gives his life over to others because of the deep and profound need he senses in the world. Jesus lowers the mountains, right? As we said in our psalm, he straightens the paths. Jesus is going to show us the way to the Father and to give us living waters. And the truth is, the Christian, the second response, the Christian response to fear is to be like shepherds, just like Jesus. To open the gate wide, regardless of the consequence, to welcome people in, to show them the living water, to give them the good food, to show them how to navigate the culture and world that we find ourselves in. And when wolves come prowling around, we don't say, hey, man, you're over there on your own today. We actually show up and stand behind them and with them. That is the way of the shepherd and to seek to protect them in whatever way uh, we can. Uh, I actually think this is what you all have done at St. Peter's. Uh, courageously, uh, sometimes uh, feeling as though you have failed, but at other times feeling some great success. But you all have opened yourselves up uh, to your neighbors in a very profound way. This congregation has offered itself as a shepherding congregation, willing to be and to live together. Now, I will say that one of the things that Jesus uh, doesn't do is Jesus doesn't promise all this is going to be easy, right? Jesus does not take away the difficult part of life. Jesus does not take away the fact that we might be afraid. 
But what we learn as we practice these shepherding behaviors is that when uh, we are afraid, when we are lost, when we feel alone, and we begin to think that we need to close that gate, actually Christians step forward. They, like Jesus, become the gate and, uh, and, and practice anyway, right? They overcome their natural inclination, their natural fear-motivated behavior to shut down, and they lean in to opening up. Remember, it is Jesus' uh, burden that is grace. His yoke is love. His punishment is pardon. Right? This is the easy way as opposed to the hard way. The life lived following Jesus is one that rejects the urge to gatekeep, to close things off just because we don't understand, we don't know, we don't have all the facts. That's, none of that's in the gospel. No, Jesus never says, hey, guys, when you all feel comfortable, you do it. Jesus invites us to do it anyway, to do it over and over again and to practice. Now, I want to close with this. The most repeated phrase in the Bible is do not be afraid. Fear is one of the most repeated words, but do not be afraid is the most repeated sentence in the Bible. Do not be afraid and remember that Jesus is the good shepherd and that we, you and I, are his shepherds too. It's our work as members of a church, of the Episcopal church. And when resurrection life, when Jesus in these kind of days after the resurrection, right before he is taken up into heaven, as he uh, rises into heaven, the ascension, which we will celebrate, uh, Jesus uh, leaves them, and once again, his disciples are afraid. And he says to them very clearly, do not be afraid. I promise to be with you till the end of the ages. This commitment of God to not leave us alone, but to continue to be our shepherd in the good times and in the bad, to the end of the ages, to the end of our age. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for listening. Join me in conversation on Twitter, at Texas Bishop and spread the word about this podcast by leaving a review on iTunes. Thank you.